tonight we're going to talk about first breast thermography which is something that has been around for a while but most women are not familiar with it and there are not a lot of people offering this service. I was led to do this by meeting a, a, a doctor in Washington DC. My daughter went to work for him and because she went to work for him and he needed somebody to do this in his office in Washington while his thermographer was out of town, he trained me how to do this. That was over four years ago. I opened Holistic Breast Health uh, four years ago, so my fourth year offering this service. Um, so um, has anyone here heard about thermography? Who has? So some of you have done a, your own research about it a little bit. Okay, good. Um, Effie, let's, let's do the next slide here. Now, thermography uses a, a very sophisticated infrared camera. All you need to do, all you need to have to do thermography is a, is a camera, a thermographer, someone who takes the images like a photographer, and an interpreter or evaluator. Some, that person is the most important person because that person interprets and, and evaluates the images. So this is my camera here, the little thing here, the FLIR. That, you know, the normal camera is sensitive to visible light and of course infrared is, is measuring heat. Okay, so why do we measure heat? Evie, you can go to the next one now. We measure heat because we can pick up with thermal imaging any significant areas of heat within the breast. Unlike the other screenings that we're familiar with, mammography, ultrasound, MRI, thermal imaging picks up heat. And heat can tell us one of three things. Uh, let's keep it here. Uh, and I'll tell you about this rainbow too because this is the image that uh, I take the images in the rainbow and we view the images in the rainbow. It's called that because they're all the colors of the rainbow and that helps us to identify the, these heat areas I'm talking about. But what does heat tell us? Why image heat? Because if we find significant heat, it can be one of three things. It's trauma, you had an accident and maybe the, the, the inflated, um, whatever, airbag. airbag inflated and you got hurt. That doesn't happen often, but it could. Infection, mastitis is infection, but you can have an infection of the breast and not have mastitis. And if it's not one of those, then it's inflammation. And you, you guys are familiar with inflammation and the fact that inflammation left intact can cause issues with health, in health. As a matter of fact, I'm sure you've heard by being associated with this fine wellness center about inflammation and how to reduce it. Because nine times out of 10 when we're imaging, we're picking up areas of inflammation because there's no trauma, no infection. It, it, by process of elimination, it is inflammation. So we have to find out why. Unlike the other screen that's looking for, like for structure, and this is looking for heat, if we can, and, and this is showing physiology, when I say physiology, because I'll show you in a moment the black and white, but this, and you'll know because uh, in just a few minutes with some other, I'm going to show you many of these because I have many of these now. I've imaged about, I've done about 500 of these. And the whole idea is to alert women about areas of heat within their breast so they can do something about it. Unlike these other screenings, when it shows up, it's there. What we want to do by picking up heat, which is indicative of inflammation, pick it up before it has an opportunity to form a structure that's going to show up in another screening. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So uh, Effie, let's go on here to the um, grayscale image. We also view the images in grayscale. When I say physiology, this is better represented of what I'm trying to relate to you. This shows the blood vessel patterns. Do you see in the black and white? I'm going to show some more black and white, but this is called thermovascularity. What this means is the blood in the veins is warmer, so it shows up in this black and white we can visually see. So that means we can visually see uh, how the blood vessels are forming. Thermography has very limited medical applications. It's good for the breasts because the breasts have just a thin layer of skin. This does not go inside the body. I've been asked this, can you tell about somebody's colon or prostate or whatever? No. 
it, it's, it's harmless, it's safe, there is no radiation to this. It's a, a, a thermographer taking images and you could do this every single day. As a matter of fact, I image pregnant and breastfeeding women when they have concerns. It's not the ideal, ideal time for women to image because they're very hormonal, but I can do it and it's very safe and we can pick up if a pregnant or breastfeeding woman has an issue in the breast and she feels something different and she wants to for investigate it. Obviously, she can't do mammography, right? There's radiation involved with that. And, uh, you know, a lot of times ultrasound is not going to show anything either. So it is ideally suited for all women, even pregnant and breastfeeding women. But th these, see the lines, you see the black and white, the blood vessels? The dark veins uh, allow clear interpretation of how these blood vessels are forming. And if they form certain way, a certain way, and there's certain patterns the interpreters look for. My doctor Ren, and I'm, he's training another doctor here with whom I'm going to be working, um, who's actually going to be evaluating as well. They're trained in knowing how these blood vessels can form. If it's indicative, it might be feeding something, if you know what I'm saying. Blood vessels form over something if it begins to start feeding something. And so if they're forming in such a way that indicates that, then that's obviously a red flag. So we look at the images in both rainbow and grayscale. Effie, let's go to the next one now. All right, this is what, this is an image in rainbow of a, of a woman who has symmetry in her breast, and we look for symmetry. That's the sign of good breast health. Do you see how these colors are alike? You know, so that always indicates good breast health, because I don't see any areas in this image that I really have to measure, and I do these measurements. This is very detailed work if you do this correctly. Because we're picking up significant heat, but we're also picking up insignificant heat. So you'll find out when you do this imaging if you have any areas within the breast or even the slightest bit warmer. Because my camera picks up heat to less than a tenth of a, of a degree. It's very sensitive. If you ask me, and I'm, you know, you can interrupt me at any time. I don't have a script on this. I, just, I know my stuff. But you can ask me a question, you know, and a lot of people say, well, why, why haven't we heard about it before now? It was approved by the FDA in 1982. When I say approved, it really wasn't approved. It was registered as an adjunct to mammography. It never caught on. It never became something that uh, the, uh, the physicians were trained to do. So um, two reasons probably. The equipment, the computers in 1982 were antiquated. Remember? They were slow. The cameras were the same way. And of course, when you only need a thermographer, <laughs> a, a camera, and an interpreter, there's not a lot of money in it. Okay? So it's a simple, simple industry that doesn't employ a lot of people. So I th I'm speculating when I give you these reasons why you don't know about it. But um, more and more, particularly in um, the western part of this country, in California, uh, women are doing this more often, and I'm seeing an interest in it more and more as women begin to want to take charge of this, because I haven't used that term yet, but taking charge is what we want to do with this. No other screening will allow you to take charge of it. They're going to tell you if there's a lump or not to investigate, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have to make decisions about how they want to investigate it. Whereas if you do this and we say, well, there's a little heat in your right breast in this area, why? Let's investigate and see why. And let's bring that inflammation down to bring that heat down so that your breasts become healthier. So this really tells you whether you have healthy breast or not. This is a, an image of a healthy breast because of the symmetry and no areas that we can see in this image that need to be investigated as far as is there any heat difference between one area of the breast versus another there are not in this particular images, image. How about the next one, Effie? Okay, this is one that shows you extreme asymmetry, okay? The breasts don't look alike, do they, in any way? This is, is indicative of a high, higher risk, and I use the word risk because this is also a risk assessment tool, it's a risk assessment screening. We have a scale from one to five, one being the lowest risk, five being the highest, and everything in between. I, most of the women I've imaged since I've be started doing this are in three, average risk. But I image a lot who are above average in the four and five category. 
and this particular woman I know and she was just curious about thermography. I don't want people coming to me who are curious about it <laughs> because it's a waste of money and curiosity is fine but to, to spend money to do this unless you're willing to take charge it, it doesn't make sense. So I want to attract women who first of all know about it you know, by ed you know, I'm educating you tonight and I educate women when they come and don't go through one of my presentations, but I want women to, to know what this is and know that when they, they've got to be prepared to find out what we find out. But most importantly, they're going to be, a, they have to be ready to do something about it because you're wasting your money if you're not prepared to actually take some steps in the right direction to decrease the heat, decrease inflammation, and decrease your risk that it's ever going to show up in another screening. So this lady had been diagnosed with breast cancer several years before I took this image of her. But she had just recently had a mammogram and it was negative, okay? I did this with her and she's high risk, I think in both breasts, maybe just the left one, because that's, I think, yeah the left one, but she's high risk in both. Um, so what does that mean? Nothing showed up in the mammogram yet, right? Uh, it has to be a centimeter in size for it even to show up on a mammogram. And that's in fatty breast tissue. So it didn't show up. So what this means for this woman is if she doesn't take charge of this and make some changes, and we'll talk about all the, all the things you can do, positive things you can do, um, then she, there's a very good likelihood that she'll have breast cancer again if she doesn't take action, take charge of this. So that's what asymmetry looks like, and you're going to be seeing some more images that indicate asymmetry. Okay, next, Effie. All right, Th now we're going to start with some examples of before and after. You know, if you give someone a risk assessment and you say that they are a four or a five, which is above average, okay, okay, what do I do about it? All right, that's what, obviously, you're going to think, well, what do I do about it? So as a health coach, I uh, provide a follow-up session with every woman who comes to me. After she does the imaging and the doctors do the interpretations and we get a full detailed report about this with your risk assessment, then I sit down with every one of my clients and we go over all the things they can do to make improvement. And a lot of it's dietary lifestyle, but now that I've imaged so many women, I know what women are doing now to affect positive change in this. I know what they're doing. Is it one magic formula for every woman? I wish I could say it was that easy. Wouldn't it be easy if we just had this magic formula? Do this, 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 this. And then, but we're all different. You know, as we've been taught, Chris and I have been taught, it's about bio-individuality. What works for one person is not gonna work for everybody. Same with true with improving this aspect of your health. But we're going to share some of the common denominators, and I'm going to show you in the images. But this particular woman was high risk, five in the left breast. And um, this was in January, and she went three months. And after she found out she was high risk, five in the left breast, she did a lot of things, a lot of, um, I mean, a lot of things. And um, one of the things she did is she, she was taking high blood pressure medicine and she reduced that. She improved her thyroid, which was a problem for her. Um, and of course, you know, the common denominator of all this, as far as dietary stuff, is food, period. It's the foundation. So if you yeah. don't have that, if you don't have that, it makes it very, very challenging because food enters into your breast health too. Okay, if we don't eat clean food, pesticide-free, non-GMOs, and we're eating more processed foods, we're, t we're, we're taking in a lot of toxins. And where do toxins like to hang out? Fat. Fat, yeah. So they hang out in the breast. And there are reasons why they hang out in the breast. And if we're not moving the breast, they definitely like to hang out there. You know, they can stay there, and if you don't move or don't move the, the, the lymph system within the breast, then those toxins can accumulate. They can begin to, uh, to produce heat, and then over time, they can produce more heat to the point where structure might form. 
if you didn't know that something was forming like that, you couldn't do anything about it. But um, later on in the presentation, when we talk about all the proactive steps you, you can take, Effie's going to take over and talk about the most important one, I believe, that every woman can take charge of this by learning how to do lymphatic, uh, a lymphatic breast massage on herself. Effie's trained to teach women how to do this, to do this on them, and make sure it's something that you regularly incorporate into your routine. But uh, every lady that I show her images is going to have some common denominators, and food is always a common denominator for making positive change in the thermogram. Next one, Effie. So here we go, another um, person who worked with her, his, her practitioner. When I say you've got to align with practitioners who are going to help you. If you have other health issues, you can't separate the breast from what else is going on in, in your health, right? I just mentioned this lady before. She made some changes with thyroid. You know, you've got to align yourself and partner with practitioners who are going to know how to correct things that are going on in your body that are major things that are affecting your overall health because that's going to positively affect your breast. So this lady, I, I remember, worked for three months with, with somebody who knew what they were doing. I think she had the Epstein-Barr virus. She, she got rid of that. She, she changed her diet, whatever. Can you visually see, ladies, the difference in the symmetry? That's what's most evident about this before and after. And this was three months. I believe the slide before it showed four months. Three and four months is record time to make improvement. You know, that's not a lot of time. You know, our, we don't get to where we are in our health overnight, and it's sometimes very difficult to undo or make corrections overnight. But when you align yourself with someone like a Mike Smith, and other practitioners in our community who know how to do this, and they're few and far between, and you, you probably know that, they're few and far between, who can really get to core issues and correct them. But I remember this lady uh, is what sh she did align with someone who helped her a great deal. We need support. This is very uh, difficult to do on your own. I, as a health coach, will help you when, when women become my clients, you have access to me by phone. It's not just after the thermogram when I do the follow-up report. But as you continue to make improvement, then, you know, in, um, then I encourage you to move on. And if you're not making improvement, we got to go, okay, we got plan, we got to do plan B. What's plan B? What have you not done? Until we find the formula that works for you. And how do we know when we found it? This shows you. This gives you feedback. That, that gave that lady feedback in addition to some other tests, because good practitioners use a lot of tests to give feedback that what they're doing with someone is actually working, what therapies are working. So let's show the next one now. All right. So this is, um, I, I do a lot of experimenting with the camera. I don't know why I shouldn't. It's a $13,000 camera. I can do anything I want with it. And, it, you know, in order to really know what works, I need to experiment even more. This lady is a, an airline pilot, a female, you know, and she is, by the very nature of what she does, she's at high risk. And, uh, fly, you know, flying an airplane with the controls, the radiation from being high, <laughs> crossing the country all the time, she's at risk. And, and she... Um, I asked her if she would help me experiment with the camera by using infrared therapy. Anybody familiar with infrared therapy at all here? Infrared saunas? Do you know? Okay. We're going to touch on that a bit. But um, I asked her if she would, you know, do this therapy one week while she was in town, not traveling a lot, not flying a lot. And she agreed. I gave her a thermogram on January 11th. That was the beginning of the week. And every afternoon, I ask her to use this infrared therapy. It happens to be, it's an infrared sauna on steroids. Uh, it's called a Photon Genius, and one person in our community actually owns one of these. And this is a very, very um, high-powered infrared therapy that affects, pos I mean, it's not just for breasts. It helps in many different areas. But she used, she agreed to use that every afternoon for five days for that, that week. And I gave her a thermogram 
um, on the 11th, and she was four plus in the left breast, which means high risk. And then uh, she didn't change anything else in her routine. I asked her to not do anything differently. And after she completed those five afternoons using this therapy, which was January 17th, I gave her, she had reduced her risk by one point in one week. That doesn't happen often. Now, you'd think, okay, well, what, everybody's got to do this. If she can reduce her risk and if at one point in one week, whoo, we got to do this. Well, other women have used the same therapy and have not had the same positive changes, unfortunately. Like I said, what works for one. But we know, we know infrared gets to the cellular level, goes inside the body for healing as a detox. We know it's, a, it's one of the common denominators that women can use to affect positive change. And let's go to the next one. And here, the same images of this airline pilot in the black and white. Now this is subtle, but I wanted you to see this because everything about thermography is subtle. This was on January the 11th. Remember, she was high risk four, four plus in the left breast. And this is her thermogram on January 17th after you. You see the very slight dimming of the, the vessels. And it's slight, but it's there. And that's a reflection of improvement when you see these. But see all of her patterns here on her breast and the loops and so forth? That's, we don't want to see that. That's, this is not a, these are not healthy breasts. She has ex a lot of patterns that are indicative that stuff, or stuff's going on, that she's at high risk. But at least when they start to dim, and that's what they did in one week, well, we want them to go away. We don't want them to just dim. And with enough work, you can get those to go away. That vascularity, those patterns will actually, the loops will start to unloop, and, and they'll dim more and more, and it'll be, and that's how we see improvement. Next one, Effie. Okay, this is the same woman. This was in January of last year, and she came back in May of 2015, but she didn't do any therapies anymore, and she returned right back to high risk in the left breast. So that was for a temporary one week period when she was doing this therapy. And this just goes to show you that it usually it takes more than one thing and you have to keep at it and not just do it for one week and not do it anymore. <laughs> exactly, it's not a quick fix. But that's just to show you that she, in the rainbow and the bl uh, black and white, the gray scale, that she unfortunately went right back up to high risk in that breast. But you know, the very nature of what she does, is she has to do more to keep her best breast healthy. Next one, Effie. Okay, and this, this is very powerful, and this is one of the uh, slides I changed today because this was just done last week on this lady, July 28th, right? This was her thermogram in the fall of last year, and she was um, assessed five in the left breast. You can see the asymmetry there, and if you see the green, let me explain here the scale so you know. Black is the coolest color, white is the hottest, and when you go from one color to the next, that's, you know, I told you my camera is sensitive to a tenth of a degree. We're only talking about a tenth of a degree temperature difference in these colors, mm -hmm. right? So if we find an area of hot pink in one breast, in the, hot, in the same area of the other breast is dark blue, that's probably not going to be significant because that's close together. But if we find an area of hot pink in one breast and we find in the same area of the other breast yellow, well, that's got to be investigated. There could be some heat difference there. So she has more green. You can see that over that left breast, right? So she was assessed a five, and she had other hot areas um, even laterally because we, we do more than image the front. Other screenings only get the front of the breast, not the front, the global breast, the breast proper. Thermography, we image from the waist up, right? So we get the front, but we get the sides as well. Everyone neglects this important area where the lymph nodes are. So we take images of the side as well, close up of the right and the left. So we get images of every angle of the breast so we can look for these heat, this heat, these significant areas of heat. Well, she didn't do anything after she got the news about this high risk uh, rating in her left breast until April of this year. 
then she decided she was going to do something about it. And, you know, life gets in the way, you know, that happens with some people. And, you know, you just can't stop living and just say, I'm going to focus on this entirely, you know. It, it impre impedes their progress. But she, she did start doing something in April, and she started going to Effie. Uh, to do lymphatic drainage regularly. She did 10 sessions with her between April and the time she re-imaged with me last week. And she, is, she reduced her risk by one point by simply, she didn't do anything else, simply by doing this. So obviously, you know, when I mentioned earlier how important lymphatic drainage and ma lymphatic massage is, this is a visual that shows you how important it can be. For this woman, it was, it worked. It worked. She needs to add on, because she's still above average. Four is above three, which is the average risk rating. So she still needs to do more. But she knows if she continues with this lymphatic work, that four is gonna go down to a three, and then hopefully from three she goes to two, which is below average. I want every woman to be below average too. That's the goal not average. Who wants to be average? Does anybody in this room want to be average? Not me. <laughs> right, Krista? Right. We want to be below. We want to have, you know, and feel good that we're doing everything we can do so that this epidemic of breast cancer in this country is, is crazy. It's crazy. And it's, it, it, the whole thing is fearful to women. But when you have fear and you let somebody else kind of control your destiny, the fear is going to continue. But when you can take charge, when you can do something about it, then it, the fear reduces. And thermography, by getting the state of your breast health, is going to allow you to take charge. And then surround yourself with people who know how to help you make these improvements. Whether it be someone like Mike Smith, of course, as health coaches, we support. Krista helps people here with the food, with many other aspects uh, of improving their health. And all of this is going to add up to improvement within the breath. So I'm so proud of this lady. And she's obviously tickled to death that she's been able to do this since April. Because again, things like this don't usually correct themselves in this short amount of time. Someone who's a high risk four or five, I say, I don't want you to go longer than six months without re-imaging. You're going to work a plan, but you don't want to go too long before you see if it's working. Because we don't want the heat going farther, uh, you know, increasing more. So uh, uh, someone at, t at a two risk, which is below average or even three, you only have to do thermography once a year to make sure your numbers are stable. But with women who are above average, they have to monitor and get feedback from thermography that what they're doing is working. Let's go to the next one, Effie. Okay, this is very powerful too. This is um, an acupuncturist that I imaged in Northeast Charlotte. Um, the image here on the left, I took of her. Well, I don't image uh, any, uh, in other, any other locations any longer. In the beginning, I took my camera to various practitioners' offices to provide this service. I do not know, do it anymore. Uh, if people want to, to do this with me, they come to my center that's in my home. But at the time, I took my camera to a, an acupuncturist's office in Northeast Charlotte. She was the last one I imaged that day, and she was busy. She was busy all day. From, I was there early, she was there early, and this lady was moving. She did nonstop, so she was the last one I imaged. Do you see, um, can you see in her image there, this gray scale, how it's kind of polka dotted looking? There's kind of like spots, you see that? That's the sign that she has, have you ever heard estrogen dominance, that term? Estrogen dominance, okay. Hormonal imbalance factors in to reproductive health, including breast health. So hormones can contribute to increased risk. This, this particular practitioner who is health conscious, but w worked nonstop all day long without a break, right? Which is stressful. Estrogen dominance is created when not necessarily your estrogen levels are sky high, but relative to your estrogen level, your progesterone level is lower. So you could be low estrogen, but if your progesterone is even lower, 
you can be estrogen dominant. We don't want estrogen dominance. That is hormonal imbalance. It's not a, a good, it's one of the things that when we do see in images like this where there's this polka dotted look, that's actually an indicator that she's got estrogen dominance. Now, why, why, did, why does she have estrogen dominance when she is a healthcare practitioner? Well, the stress of her day that day, right? Stress lowers progesterone, okay? So you might be estrogen dominant one day when you look, you, you're controlling your stress, but the next day when your stress levels are sky high, like it was for her that day, we're gonna see that kind of image. Now, when I re-imaged her in April, I think it was, when she did her second thermogram, I said, okay, I'm imaging you at the beginning of the day, girl. <laughs> so I, she was the very first one I imaged. And look, she doesn't have that, does she? So we can see a lot of things in the images, a lot of things like this in the images that can help us be in, um, discuss, you know, what's causing your high-risk thermogram? What's causing the heat in your breast? Is it hormones? When we see this kind of pattern, I have to talk about hormones, you know? Are you having other hormonal symptoms? Uh, how is your stress level? I talk about reducing stress. You know, that's another common denominator. In disease and health, you've got to manage and reduce stress because we know it affects every single f part of our health including the breast, and this is a perfect example, and that's why I put these images up. They, it's very clear that under stress, it looks like this. Calmer, beginning of the day, looks like this. Uh, suppose you do this every day, you, you, you know, you're stressed out. You're gonna be like that continuously. And this estrogen dominance is gonna be prevalent and it, it's a risk factor to, for, for breast health. It, it's going to lead to some breast issues. Next, Effie. All right, now, I mentioned early on in the presentation about physiology uh, and, and factoring in this because physiological changes in our body occur, occur years before structural change. And I, I mentioned that earlier. We're trying to get this when heat is just beginning to form and we want to reduce the heat so it doesn't um, become something that increases to the point where it might form structure and, and be picked up on another screening. This particular, the, this before and after shows a lady who had a, um, I think a normal uh, mammogram but had a high-risk thermogram. You can see why she had the high-risk thermogram. Do you see that area of yellow in her left breast? Okay. So after the high-risk thermogram, she most likely went on to have an ultrasound MRI, and uh, she was confirmed with, with breast cancer. People always say, can you see breast cancer in these images? No, I can't. I can tell you've got heat. I can tell you something's going on in that area of your breast. And then you have to decide, okay, do I feel anything? Should I correlate with another screening, which is on every one of my reports, because this does not replace any other screening? So if you feel something differently and there's heat there, it's probably a good idea to, to select a screening at, that you, you, know, you feel comfortable doing to correlate whether or not anything is there. But I do tell women this, if you decide to correlate with another screening, make sure you pick the one that's most appropriate for you. When I say that, have any of you heard about breast density and breast health and how that affects? Okay, mammography. Who's heard of this? So, okay. Mammography is effective for 50% of the women who do this screening. For the other 50% who have the extremely dense or heterogeneously dense breasts, they can't read the images. So, in those dense breasts, they're looking, it shows up, and I'll show you an image of this in a little bit, shows up white on white and they cannot see, they cannot read it. So obviously someone who knows they have dense breasts doing a mammogram, you know, is it gonna show anything? Is this gonna make me feel better? You know, if it's not gonna be effective, then an ultrasound obviously would probably be better. In an ideal world, this breast density issue just came up several years ago. There was a, a lady in Connecticut who had a, a mammogram and it was 
negative and she just felt like, okay, my breasts are all healthy because the mammogram doesn't show anything. Well, for whatever reason, she did have another screening and then she, had, I think, which led to a biopsy and she was confirmed with breast cancer. Well, she had very dense breasts and no one told her. She wasn't aware of it, as most women are not aware of it, even now. She got mad. She went to the state Supreme Court in Connecticut and got the first law passed in this country that, t that makes it uh, by law that a radiologist must tell a woman now about her breast density. So if you go have a mammogram and you get a report back from your mammogram, it's going to, it has to have your density on there. And they follow a visual. But if you're in extremely dense or heterogeneously dense, the two highest densities, what they're telling you by law but they're not telling you why they're telling you this, is that you better look at other screenings if you want to be 100% sure that there's not structure in your breast. And an ultrasound would then be appropriate. In Charlotte, you cannot have a, an ultrasound without having a mammogram. And I think there are other areas of the country where it's that way as well. Insurance is set up to do it this way. It's mammogram, ultrasound. They skip over MRI most of the time, even though it's the most effective, but it's also the most expensive. So if they find anything in a mammogram or an ultrasound, the next step is biopsy. There are other ways that women today, the ones who are taking charge, are another route that they can follow other than this, if they so choose. It's the road less traveled, and I have to assume because you're here at Mike Smith's office that you guys are open to natural healing, and you wouldn't be here. Uh, well, there are ways that a lot of my clients are um, choosing to handle this that doesn't involve uh, going through this system. So this lady, uh, let's do the next one. Now I've got one more that shows the same thing. This lady had dense breast tissue. Uh, you can see in her left breast too. And then uh, the mammogram did not indicate it and further testing indicated she was, including this thermogram, which is definitely high risk. Next, Effie. Okay, this is not my camera, but I'm showing this to you because this is a screening for all ages of women, too. You know, it's not just for, I actually recommend it for women in their, tw you know, beginning in their 20s. Uh, women in their 20s may not be thinking about breast health, but they should because there's a, a, a higher incidence now of inflammatory breast disease, unfortunately. And inflammatory breast disease doesn't show up as a lump. So even if you examine your breast, you're not going to feel a lump with this particular type of cancer. It is called inflammatory breast disease and it shows up as a rash. So if women in their 20s could do this, well, of course we would pick up the heat before a rash form. So it's very important that you take what I'm telling you tonight and pass it along to your daughters if you have any in that age group because it's not, it's for every woman and they have a lot to gain if they start doing this uh, now. The sooner you can establish a baseline, you can feel confident, a baseline um, with a couple of images where the numbers are stable. There, there are no significant heat differences. You're, all your numbers are stable. That's indicative that you've got healthy, healthy breasts, you're stable. And then again, just do this once a year. But this is what it looks like, and, and by the time it shows up as a rash, then it's an aggressive form of disease, unfortunately. How about the next one, Effie? Remember, I, I, I mentioned to you about all these images, I mean, all these screenings that you can consider, and I wanted to visually show and discuss them as well. And um, That's the thermogram, this is the mammogram, the MRI, and the ultrasound. Ultrasound can pick up a, a fluid-filled cyst versus a solid cyst. And when it's solid, that's when they normally want to further investigate by doing another screening or a biopsy. This tomosynthesis is what you've probably heard, it's called 3D mammography. Has anyone heard of 3D mammography? Well, that is the solution um, um, for dense breasts, according to the radiologist. Um, and what it is, it, they slice the breast. You see all the images, they slice the breast to get through this dense tissue. But by the time that she's all said and done, this particular technology gives her up to three times the amount of radiation. So, and women are rethinking mammography because of the radiation. This is a fact. 
and you probably do know this. If you don't, you need to know this. Mammography is a risk factor for the very disease it's trying to prevent because it's radiation. Next, next one, Effie. This is what uh, a cyst, a, a lump in a fatty breast looks like, and this is a dense breast tissue. So you can see that they can't pick any, they can't read it, they can't see it. Clear in the fatty tissue. Next one, Effie. All right, what to expect when you come and do this? And then we will open it up to questions. You guys have been good, you haven't interrupted me at all. <laughs> but I don't mind. Um, simple protocols. I have a protocol sheet that I send out to every client when they make an appointment with me. And what I want you to do prior to coming in is simply cool your body down. You're going to be further cooled in a temperature controlled room around 68 degrees, und undressed from the waist up for about 15 minutes. But prior to coming, you know, no caffeine, no heavy exercise, no chiropractic care, no lotions, no antiperspirants or deodorants before you come because all of these things heat the body. So when you, when you arrive after following the protocols, um, I cool you down and take your a breast health history during that time rather than I don't put you in a cold room and say okay set the timer I'll see you in 15 minutes I don't do that but I don't require that you do intake forms so I can be in there with you and I ask questions we do the timer and it goes by so quickly women don't even realize it's been 15 minutes and once the 15 minutes has passed I put you on my why don't you do the next um, slide that's my a positioning rug, my little food rug, <laughs> that positions you for all the images I will be taking of you. So this is my thermography room. That's my camera and laptop. The laptop takes the images. And uh, you do have to put your hands behind your head. And of course, I could not really show you exactly how it is because I couldn't disrobe for this, but you'll have your uh, top off, of course, during that time. Uh, and that's the front image that that I'm, face, I'm facing number one, and then there's six images I take of you. And uh, front, the laterals, close up of the right and left, and a back image. The back can tell us about the front. There's no way to separate the breast from the rest of the body, and there's no way um, to, to separate other parts of the body and how they might affect the breast. And structure enters into breast health. That's why good chiropractors are worth their weight in gold because if they can fix a structural issue and I've had women go you know who we can see in the images sometimes if it's structure and the back can tell us that sometimes the back can tell us that if there's more heat on one side and that we're, we're seeing the same area showing heat here we try to be investigative and see if structure is involved and then good chiropractor who knows how to correct these structural issues can help you actually improve the, the uh, congestion in your breast by improving the lymphatic flow and that's that's how structure enters into it. Next Effie. It's effective like I've mentioned uh, for women of all ages, all breast types, particularly the dense the, the dense breast. Where, um, and I do get a lot of women who have dense breasts come to see me. It's ideal for implants as well. Um, women who have breast implants and are still doing mammography what that does when you, you know they do the mammogram, they're, they're squashing the implant. They're hastening the demise of the implant because implants don't last forever, they give out. And the more you do a screening like this that weakens them, the faster they're gonna wear out. So do not recommend mammography for women with breast implants. Uh, breast reductions, a lot of women for health reasons have breast reductions and it's good for them as well. And See, anytime you do any kind of surgery, and Effie will tell you this too, you know, it creates scar tissue. What does scar tissue do with the lymphatic? It can make it a little bit more challenging to move what it needs, the lymph in that area, to get, you know, it can be stuck because of scar tissue. Effie is adept at feeling the areas where scars are, working with them, smoothing them out, um, and can do wonders with people who have had even, you know, women who have had, um, gone through treatment and done surgery and had mastectomies and so forth. She also works with the women like that because they obviously have a lot of challenges with the lymph system, having had lymph nodes removed and so forth. 
monitoring after surgery. So if, if someone, you know, is going to go through surgery for breast cancer and they're going to, whatever treatment uh, they decide they want to do, whether it be conventional treatment or not conventional treatment, a thermogram is good to see what it's like right now and then after the therapies, whatever they are, monitor to see if the therapies are working, whether it be from chemotherapy or um, when the surgery afterwards, it ha is the heat different? You have to heal from the surgery, but any kind of, the, any kind of therapies, it can help you monitor uh, what it's looking like as you make improvement. I mentioned pregnant and breastfeeding women. I do not promote it for pregnant and breastfeeding women. It doesn't give a true indication of your breast health because they're so, the hormones are raging, right? And actually, there is an ideal time to image f with the thermogram. I don't require that you come day six through 10 of your period, but what I do like is to re-image people during the same time of their cycle because then we can p compare apples to apples. But actually, Dr. Wren says uh, day six through 10 is ideal to do uh, a thermogram of your cycle. So I always get the day one of your, of your period so it indicated. Simple and painless, you can see how simple it is. And not, as I mentioned, it's attractive to a lot of women because it isn't invasive and there is no radiation and, and it doesn't hurt. Uh, and it's the only screening that provides that risk assessment that's going to tell you things, hopefully way in advance of anything happening, so you can do something about it to take that proactive, preventive approach. What's, is there another one here? Okay. And the fear I mentioned too, you know, when you take charge, you can re reduce and eliminate that fear. I think every woman has that fear because our culture has created this fear. One in eight, one in eight, right? And then when October comes, we're, you know, the awareness month. Every October, it's the same thing with awareness. Well, we are aware. We are aware not just in October, we're overly aware ad nauseum. But we need to, you know, throughout the year, rather than, you know, this awareness, which creates fear, is learn proactive preventive steps, which Effie and I, in our partnership, we are, we are passionate about sharing all the information we can to help women make improvement in this area of their health. Oh, oh that's right. I got it. No, I got it. It's next. So it is a paradigm shift from fear to taking charge. And of course, you know, there, a lot of us go to practitioners and we rely on them to keep our records and, you know, so forth. You know, I advise women, okay, if you had a screening, you keep a copy. Don't rely on them to keep copies of your medical records because when you when and if you do need them you're, it's a hassle to get them so always when you pay for a medical procedure keep copies you're in charge of your health and the only way you can make the right decisions for you is to have everything together and be organized and know what you want uh, by doing your own research which I know you ladies do you know it, it's a personal choice which route you want to go on this you know I mentioned earlier in the presentation too, I don't want women who are just curious about this. You know, if you want to spend $220, which is what it costs, and insurance doesn't cover it, but for $220, while I'm mentioning the, the price, it does include the imaging, the report and the risk assessment from an ev the evaluating doctor, and the follow-up visit to go over the report, and most importantly discuss all the things you can do to make improvement. I give you resources, suggestions, and recommendations, including where to find a good health coach. So, you know, not, you know, I think there are a lot of women who feel uncomfortable or foolish taking, uh, you know, for choosing a preventive path because our culture doesn't promote this. I, m I make this point here because, yes, we're going against the flow when we decide we want to do something differently than the way the system is set up. And that's a hard, it's a hard way to go. We need, for those women who are going the other way, we need, we, we all, in other women who want to do the same thing, we need to support one another. It's fine when someone's diagnosed to, to have a support system as well with the pink ribbon, you know, but um, why not band together and say, listen, we can do this, we, we can prevent it. We don't, we don't have to wait and then get our support system. Let women band together 
to talk about ways to, to do something about it as opposed to, you know, relying on after you're getting diagnosed that support system that's going to take you through these conventional treatments. They're, you know, you've got, they've got to have that too. But we need a support system around preventive steps. We're not victims survivors. We're all survivors. Everyone in this room is a survivor, survivor of life. And I, th I think victims and survivors, that, those terms are, you make people feel helpless. You know, I'm not in charge. I'm a victim. Huh. Or I've survived this because I've gone through the treatment. We're individuals in charge of our own bodies and our own health. And, it's, and I um, know that there are a lot of women who don't look at at, at their health this way because they're not, they don't have that support system that believes like this. If they, you know, and they, even though they might want to try something different, if they don't have people in their lives who are supportive of what they're doing, it makes it more difficult. So that's why around thermography, I know Effie and I, we have informally formed a pretty large group now of women. I, get it, I guess if we gathered them in this room tonight <laughs> or any time, they would go, wow what I have learned from this. I am more aware of my breast and my breast health and how they feel versus how they shouldn't feel. It's all about this, the touch. And this is a good segue for Effie because she, she has the touch. She's going to make sure. Most women don't examine their breast. okay? On every report that comes back from a thermogram, it says manual breast exam. The doctor who trained me to do this in D.C. believes that that is the first thing you do. Okay, we find heat. Do you feel anything related to that heat? Where that heat is, do you feel something different? Effie can help. She takes the thermogram and uses it as a road map. And if she sees that the thermogram has indicated heat in this breast, in this area, she's going to feel it. She's going to have you feel it. She's going to feel the other area. Is there a difference? Are we feeling tissue changes? Because we want to pick up tissue changes way before structure forms. Because if, if the tissue is beginning to feel differently, she'll elaborate, then over time, that could thicken more. It can form a structure. And that's where we don't want to go. So everything about thermography is subtle. You're going to know significant and insignificant heat. And you're going to go with Effie and, 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 uh, and actually compare what we find in the thermogram with how the breasts actually feel, which is going to empower you to work on those areas. As she, I mean, she gives a breast health education session uh, with all of my clients who go to her, and most of them do. And um, you know, the, the, she's doing great work. I mean, look at you saw the lady in four months what she had done just by doing lymphatic breast massage and drainage with Effie. So, with that. I'm going to turn it over to my friend and my associate, Effie Hall, and thank you for your attention. You can ask questions. You want to reserve it for after Effie then? Or do you have any questions about thermography before Effie gets up and talks about lymphatic? Is there anything unclear? Yes, Kathy. I just wondered, after looking at all of your pictures, mm -hmm. can you tell anything about, this? like I noticed one lady had a white mm -hmm. spot here where a thyroid probably is, mm -hmm. and she didn't have it the first time. Do you a doctor who is in tune with these kind of, yes, with thermography and picking up, yes. This area always runs hot. Every woman has red here, usually, to varying degrees. But yes, with subsequent thermograms, if anything changes in this area, I have known that it can pick up thyroid issues. It has very few medical applications, as I mentioned earlier, because um, it doesn't go inside. But with something like the thyroid, right if someone who knows what they're doing and can look at this and, and compare images, they could pick up something. And I've, I've heard that that can happen. I can image a jaw, too. I do image women's jaws to tell how their oral health is. And um, I have partnered with a holistic dentist and done some imaging of some clients to uh, provide this information to the dentist to show them the level of inflammation that's in the mouth and then they correct hopefully the inflammation and we can do a follow-up to see that what they've done is help. And oral health fact is, is a huge factor 
in breast health, ladies, in overall health. And it, if the meridian, if you have a root canal in the meridian that corresponds to the breast, it's a risk factor for breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any root canal. Any, Any root, root canal. canal. Really? Yeah. No. Absolutely. This is not information that's widely known. For breast but and cardiac. Heart. Yeah. They've done more studies about the heart and the breast. But um, oral health, health contributes to overall health. That's why when I see on the news, don't do flossing, yes. I'm going, you got Just to be kidding me. You know, because <laughs> it promotes good oral health, and good oral health promotes good overall health. Because mm -hmm. you, can, you can get, if you're inflamed in the mouth in any way, you know, you've got bacteria, you've got a, a low level infection. It seeps into the tissues and goes to other areas of the body. Yes, that's a fact. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, good question. My Dr. Wren has picked it up when I say, doctor, and he's seen a lot of these. Not everybody can look. And it's all about comparison. Mm -hmm. You can see I always put up before and after. It's all, we got to compare. When I do a follow-up thermogram, I'm, I, I re-image the exact same areas on the initial thermogram in order to see what difference has been made. We want to see those numbers go down, those heat differences. So I have to be very exact as, you know, measure the exact same areas so I can compare apples to apples. Any other questions? Yes. Can you talk about feeling heat? Uh-huh. You mean if, if, it's, if there's actually a heat spot, I might could mm -hmm. feel it? Yeah. It's possible, isn't it? And what number? It has to be quite, would a, be? quite a bit of. Uh, or it depends she's on how felt it. I don't. Your, it depends on how sensitive your hands are, first of all, and you can't. I mean, the common individual who hasn't really done any type of work could probably feel a two degree difference, and we do get quite a few two degree differences in the two breasts. Mm -hmm. So you probably should be able to feel that. Anything over 1.5 degrees centigrade warmer, one area of the breast versus the same area in the other breast is significant. So you go anything over that, it, it assesses higher risk because the higher the heat, okay, what's going on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes. I know every woman is different, but other than the lymphatic massage, mm -hmm. if you saw someone was a four or a five, what are some of the typical um, things, things I recommend? That you recommend to well, I, right, I didn't mention this, but every one of the first things I do when I get in my thermography room with a client who's never done this before and she's undressing in front of me. Most women are comfortable with that. I have very few, but I do provide a screen. I don't know if you saw that. You could hide behind the screen if you wanted to. But uh, I inspect her bra. Mm -hmm. She has to pass my bra test. <laughs> now, what does bra? Okay, bras are huge in breast health. And anybody who tells you that they don't negatively affect your breast health if they're improperly fitted or have wires, they're misleading you. They're misleading you. And most bras do have the wires. That's what the manufacturers make. If you go any lingerie bras, you know, it's, it's, it's the wires. And the less you can wear a bra, the better for your, for your breast. And it doesn't mean that you're going to sag more. You're going to love this picture. <laughs> We're really getting into it now with <laughs> poor Patrick. We might make him blush yet. <laughs> No, um, actually, there's, there, they did a study in France that shows that women who wore bras less often did, did not have as much sagging. Because consider the bra as a supplement. We need a supplement to support us. Well, this bra is, is, is supporting the breast, and the muscles around the breast don't have an opportunity to work at all. Those, those are the muscles. If you strengthen without wearing a bra, they're going to hold you up. But when you take your bra off, ladies, ladies what happens? Boom, right? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> That's, so it prom bra wearing promotes sagging. And do not wear bras with wires because I see frequently heat associated directly where the wires cut in. Mm -hmm. Right here. Mm -hmm. Anything uncomfortable that compresses you, You've got to reevaluate it just because this is the bra that you want. It looks good, and I think women think about bras how they look, and how they look in their clothing. And, and of course, 
you do have to go out in the world and be presentable. So you, there are occasions when you definitely have to wear a bra, but there are ways to get around it and reduce your bra wearing. And if you know, make sure it's properly fitted too, because an improperly fitted bra can be just as bad as one with wires. Because if anything leaves a mark around you when you take it off, it's like wearing a tight sock that cuts off circulation. What do you think that's doing? What do you think that's doing to the breast? It's creating congestion. Remember those toxins like to hang out in the fat cells? And the food that we eat, they hang there. And if we're not moving or moving the limp, like doing this lymphatic drainage and exercising with, by jumping up and down, jumping rope would do it. But a rebounder, everybody can do a rebounder. It doesn't affect the lower body. You know what I'm talking about, a mini trampoline. That is absolutely the best exercise you can do for lymphatics and, and for health. It gets the breast moving, the whole body. The limp, and Effie's going to go into this, it doesn't take much to move the limp. Physically moving does it, but sometimes with bra wearing, antiperspirants and deodorants, never put an antiperspirant on your, never ever clog up your pores underneath your armpits. We need to sweat. That is a detox, a major detox. So if you're preventing your body from sweating, you're building up toxins right here, right at the breast. So natural deodorants, no chemicals. Stay away from, you know, does everyone know about Environmental Working Group, the site? Mm -hmm. Okay, they rate consumer products according to safety, meaning the least harmful chemicals. You know, the fewer, like with food, the fewer the ingredients, in your consumer products, the better. Vinegar, baking soda, coconut oil. I mean, one ingredient, can't beat it. So if you do buy something in a store, do, do go to Environmental Working Group because these chemicals, as well as our food, right, they're hormones in the food, we know that, dairy and meat. Commercial meat and dairy, if you ask why, there's a lot of reproductive e issues that is definitely creating hormonal imbalance eating the, these kind of foods. That's why it's good to eat clean animal protein, no growth hormones, no antibiotics. Because, but chemicals also can mimic estrogen. So that can create hormonal imbalance. So sodium lauryl sulfate, which is the thing in shampoos and toothpaste that make it suds, that is an endocrine disruptor. Environmental Working Group has a great list of endocrine disruptors on their site as well as they're the ones who put out the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. So go in there and look at their endocrine disruptors because you want to avoid those. Those are creating hormonal imbalance. Why do men have uh, man boobs? Have you ever seen the man with man boobs? Mm -hmm. Well, he's at risk for breast cancer. There's no question. Why is he that way? He's got too much estrogen. For the most part, why would he grow breast, right? Mm -hmm. So how is he getting it? Foods. Yeah. And the things he puts on his skin. Chlorine is an endocrine, fluoride, things in our water. There's so many things in our environments, you know, that create hormonal imbalance. Men and women. Why young girls at 10, at 10 why do they have their periods? Something to think about. Yeah. So structure too, if you're off balance, that's, you know, like I said, that can, that can create, you know, in, if the rib cage is not moving, if you're not breathing well, we don't move the ribs too much. <laughs> and breathing is a detox. And if you don't re move the ribs, you know, that can actually create problems within the breast. It's all connected. But breathing is an important detox system. Sweating is important. Your digestive system have to have it in working order. You're not going to be able to metabolize your estrogens properly, metabolize your foods, and get the maximum nutrients. So digestion is good, and kidney function. All these things detox the body naturally. Krista knows how to do a, a wonderful cleanse, too, to get, you know, and I think that's a good thing once a year. But if you can keep your normal detox systems working well, then you don't need a cleanse more than even once a year. You can do it by keeping these major systems working and the lymphatic system is one that's overlooked. There's nothing in the media about moving the limp at all. And it's, it's critical. It's critical for breast health. 
It's critical for overall health. You know, body in motion stays in motion, and that's a fact. So exercise, you got to move. You got to move. I have a bouncy ball desk uh, chair at my desk. You know, you know the bouncy balls. Yeah. I bought a chair that has a frame and the bouncy ball. I have to do a lot of computer work, but I get bored, so I, I bounce up and down on my, you know, bouncy chair. Even that, if you can't do a rebound or a jump rope or jog or do anything, then you can at least get that bouncy ball and, and bounce on it. And you want some movement with the breast. Yes, an exercise bra, you know, when you're doing heavy exercise, depending on the size of the breast, is a necessity. But again, don't buy the next size up. Don't buy the tightest exercise bra you can buy because, oh, uh, I can't move. You know, my breasts are not moving and I don't need them to move at all. I understand that it can hurt you if they move too much, and I get that. But don't buy the tightest one. Get some movement with the breast. You know, use reason with that. What other? There, 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 there are other things, but we, ha we have touched on quite a few of them. I don't want to take away any of the rest of the time. For yes, Kathy. I was just going to mention Tai Chi. Well, of course. <laughs> the, the focus is on breath and movement, and improving circulation. And you're moving your arms. Oh, yes. All it's, let, let us count the ways something like Tai Chi is so, so very good for us. The, the breath work. Meditation, Tai Chi, yoga that focuses on breath. There are three great modalities for utilizing this breathing detox that we, we're, that we don't think about. We don't breathe deeply unless we think about it. And um, like talking right now, you're not, we're not breathing from, you know, I'm not breathing from here. It's all up here. So if you don't take the time to learn to take those deep breaths up and let this gut come out on the exhale and, you know, get it to this. This is what strengthens the gut is it goes to, the, you know, the breathing strengthens the gut. And if you ask an, any Asian practitioner about breast health and what organ is most involved, uh, most closely related, it'll be dig digestion. And, of course, we re you know, even in Western medicine, it's the gut. The gut, you know. It's very, very important to keep that system working very well. So if you have any of those issues, um, you're not able to maximize the nutrients from good food if your digestive system is not working. And again, Everybody's it affects... Everybody here is working on that. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, but, the, um, it's, it's, you know, the whole, you've got to work on the whole body if you're going to affect okay. improvement here, too. So um, we can't separate these breasts from what else is going on. So if we can correct core issues, start some of these life, you know, begin to make these changes, reduce your bra wearing, get involved, do lymphatic drainage of the breast yourself. Effie can teach you how to do that. Make sure you're doing it properly. You know, consider doing a thermogram just to see what the state of your breast health is so you know what areas you need to work on specifically within the breast because she can fix a spot or she can fix, you know, when we see that thermovascularity, the black and, you know, that d diminishes. The more work that she does on it, it, that goes, that helps it go away, those blood vessel patterns, because the heat's going down. So um, we could talk, I, I mean, I have a, a, a really extensive outline of suggestions and recommendations when after we get the report back and I visit with every one of my clients that I go over where I don't leave out anything because and most importantly what women are doing who've made improvement you will you know I share with with all of all of my clients what other women are doing and there's now so many good common denominators one lady stopped swimming in a chlorinated pool and had a very positive change from that so mm-hmm if you can find a salt pool, that's definitely preferable to chlorine. Chlorine is something we need to avoid. We know in our water it doesn't taste good, but it's, it's bleach, ladies. Yeah. Okay, over time that cannot help but affect your system because the skin is the largest organ. So it's lifestyle things you have to think about mm -hmm. without putting yourself in a bubble and, and making other people think you're crazy. <laughs>
Which, which already, most of the time, <laughs> most of the time, people look at me and like, "Where are you coming from?" <laughs> but that's something as you continue on this health journey, you're going to have to deal with. And you know, do do you go to that birthday party because they're not serving the kind of food you want? Okay, no. If this is someone important in your life, you don't stop living. You know, you you go. Okay, this is once a year. If you can do something. Well, 75 to 80 percent of the time, you're doing great, but we're all going to be bad. And I, and it's, it was called going bad. You got to be bad every now and then. <laughs> you got to go bad. We're human, and our relationships and going out to eat with people we care about and having that supersedes any anything else. That's what nourishes our soul, and we're not going to be happy unless we have that really in in a good place, and. I'm glad I mentioned that. Emotions? Okay. A woman can be doing everything perfectly. A lot of the things we've talked to, she could be on the straight and do everything. Okay, I do that, I do that, I do that, I do that. Okay. Mm. All right. <laughs> what, what's our plan? Um, and then we get to them talking about, you know, emotions. If, if she's unhappy in her job, in a relationship, if she's kept something inside of her for years that she's never dealt with emotionally, that can cause a high-risk thermogram. Just that. So emotions play a huge role in this. And um, there are theories about, you know, breast, right versus left breast. The left breast is where our heart is. So a third of the women, women I've imaged um, are high-risk in the left breast. So heart enters into this. Broken hearts, relationships with females, that's another thing associated with the left breast, female relationships. The right breast is the male, okay? So, you know, you can't, you, you have to look at some of this, especially if, you, you know, a woman's doing everything else right. There's, this emotional component is huge, it creates disease in the body, especially if you've got something locked in, you've been unhappy in this relationship or this job for years, you're not taking any steps to get out of it. Every day you wake up and you go, how do I do this? And you don't make any change. The body, it's going to affect the body. This is what we call primary food. And if you don't have primary food balanced in your life, no matter what you put in your mouth, you can, you know, be the cleanest food ever, but you know, you still could get sick because of the emotions. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. I know. That's why mind, body, spirit. <laughs>